All right, so I have here a setup that I've been working on for a couple of years, and it basically entails uh, using uh, this 3D printed uh, probe, four point probe set setup basically, uh, to make a contact, a uh, basically a contact with a crystal, a nonlinear crystal called KTP, uh, which has been. Um, had a, had a layer of graph, uh, basically conductive uh, graphene uh, film of about 10 microns uh, thickness uh, deposited on one of its um, surface uh, kind of corners, one of its facets. Uh, and the bottom half of the crystal is in contact with an electrode, uh, which has uh, roughly, again, a, a 10 micron spacing between each of the uh, lines. And what I'm attempting to do with this uh, setup is I'm trying to uh, induce um, a ferroelectric uh, change in the crystal uh, that has periodicity matching uh, the periodicity of the bottom electrode, so of 10 micron spacing. And this is a process called periodic uh, polling, and um, it can be done on a variety of nonlinear uh, crystals, provided that they have uh, basically ferroelectric domains, uh, KTP is one of these crystals and um, there's another crystal called uh, LBO which is also uh, ferroelectric and can have periodic polling induced in on it but the advantage of using KTP is that you can actually do it with a relatively low uh, voltage relatively speaking uh, compared to other nonlinear crystals uh, so the the uh, ferroelectric domains can be oriented or reoriented uh, with a um, effective uh, co kind of coercion field of around uh, two kilovolt uh, per millimeter and that sounds qu quite a lot two kilovolts two thousand volts per millimeter uh, but compared to other crystals it's actually relatively low so it can be done with more or less uh, bespoke components so i'm actually using a uh, off-the-shelf uh, neon sign uh, power supply transformer basically high voltage uh, power supply which can um, create a effective field of around uh, um, in total four kilovolts so you're talking then uh, two kilovolt per millimeter because this uh, crystal the orientation of it is roughly uh, two millimeters in thickness uh, five millimeters in uh, length and uh, this can um, hopefully uh, induce periodic polling on this crystal and the reason i want to do this is because uh, as you can probably tell from a few other videos i've shared on my channel uh, one thing that I'm absolutely fascinated by is using nonlinear optics uh, to induce uh, entanglement on uh, on photons on um, on uh, in um, in light. Basically, uh, polarization entanglement can be uh, created using a process called spontaneous parametric down conversion, and this is uh, demonstrated uh, in quite a few videos online. Uh, obviously, research papers um, included going back. To the times of Alan Aspect and uh, sorry, I'm um, well him, but also uh, more more uh, modernly, more contemporarily, using nonlinear optics, um, uh, a man called Anton Seilinger, probably the most kind of at the forefront of this research at the moment. But most of the original uh, papers, literature, use BBO crystal, beta barium borate, and I have experimented with that crystal as well. However, it's extremely limited. The uh, the amount of photons that are entangled from a pump source, say 405 nanometers, uh, creating um, twins, basically polarization entangled pairs of 8 to 10 nanometer photons. The efficiency of this is very low using crystals like BBO and uh, KTP can uh, induce this as well, uh, less efficiently still. But one thing that uh, material scientists and working in this field have found is that uh, periodic polling can greatly enhance uh, the frequency and uh, the uh, sorry the instances of uh, SBDC uh, in crystals and it can also produce a broadband uh, entanglement uh, as well uh, so the entanglement not just in the uh, central uh, domain of 8 to 10 nanometers uh, using a 405 nanometer pump but uh, all of the uh, wavelengths sort of in between um, th those uh, those states can be um, polarization entangled, and uh, more interestingly still, uh, at least from an economic point of view, a KTP is remarkably cheap. Um, it's pretty much had a thirty-year history 
in, uh, in optics in general. In fact, if you've ever used a green uh, laser pointer, it actually uses a KTP crystal uh, um, along with some other uh, optical crystals uh, to convert 810 nanometer light actually back to uh, a, a frequency up conversion up to 532 uh, nanometers, uh, roughly green light. But uh, KTP is remarkably cheap. I mean, this crystal itself only costs about 30 euros uh, from, uh, from China. Uh, but uh, induced periodic folding um, is, a, is a relatively new technique. Um, uh, it actually is uh, what makes these crystals so expensive. Uh, other kind of techniques, such as doping the crystal with rubidium atoms and so on, have, have been shown to increase the efficiency of the SPDC uh, process. But I've been wanting to do this for, for uh, myself, actually, using essentially a kind of, uh, you can see, kind of typical deep peak uh, equipment uh, magnets and uh, uh, a little um, kind of electrodes uh, made for gas sensing. Uh, so more or less bespoke components, all incidentally under um, uh, the kind of, uh, I suppose, budget of a uh, thousand euro, uh, less than a thousand euro. But uh, the reason why I'm trying to do this is to try and prove that it can actually be possible to make these crystals in situ by refurbishing old crystals. And uh, especially if you're like me, you're trying to do quantum physics on a budget. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching. And uh, yeah. I'll be happy to share the results of this video and these experiments very, very soon. Thank you.